Hello, welcome back. So today in this uh, video as part of module 4 uh, that is Python in Databricks, uh, we will learn Python control flows. That means uh, what are the different control flow, basic uh, control flow operation that you can perform in Python so that we can see uh, using the Databricks. And uh, before proceeding, if you are new to this channel and haven't yet subscribed for this channel, we would recommend you to please subscribe and also press bell button for instant notification. So let's get started. So as you can see here, there are basic Python control flows that we can see in our demonstration today. That is, uh, so what is if else condition and how do how does the error impact the notebook execution? So because there will be different cells in Databricks, uh, as you know, and uh, how does that uh, impact when a particular cell cell uh, which is containing Python code is failed? And also we will take a simple test uh, with the assert statement and we will also see about the try catch uh, statement or try catch block uh, finally we will end with the python control flow for sql queries so quickly jumping to the practical uh, aspects of it uh, so let us see the if else condition right so if and clause are common uh, in any 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 programming language if you take right uh, Similarly, if you go for a SQL, it is having a case statement where we have already seen in the previous video where we have a case when and then uh, end with a, uh, if it is a default condition, we can give an statement. So similarly, like uh, in the control flow as part of Python, uh, we can see. So let us start with uh, beginning with assigning a variable uh, for food we will assign as a beans, which is a, uh, one variable that we are taking. So followed by uh, when you're talking about uh, if else condition right so there are different operators uh, that we can use uh, in the if else condition uh, as part of the condition so as you know uh, we can use equals operator greater than less than greater than equal to less than equal to or not equal to right so these are the different uh, uh, conditions that we can use uh, when we are using python uh, if else statement right so and coming to the how do we use uh, python if else statement or the control flows is uh, we can basically use if uh, particular variable right variable equals to beans so that means here you can hard code or you can use, use uh, some variable here as well right and then you can uh, basically print uh, so as we are seeing here we are using a uh, f string here again okay? and i love food whatever is that so since we have assigned a uh, food uh, to beans uh, that means food is beans here and it is satisfying the if condition so that's why it is going to the if condition uh, uh, print statement and not else statement so it says i love beans otherwise it would have printed i don't eat beans so now i'm just changing the food that from beans to pizza right after changing uh, if i try to execute the same if condition so it says uh, i don't eat pizza because it is not equal to beans the food is not equal to beans because you have assigned it to pizza so the else condition is getting executed so now let us try to uh, assign uh, food to potatoes and now let us uh, make uh, if else condition a little more complicated uh, and if you see uh, we can use uh, else if or we can use elif elif is a short form of else if uh, so we can use uh, that as a, another case statement uh, so if and then followed by certain condition and then else uh, so whatever case is it should, it should start with a semicolon right uh, and then uh, in lf uh, so you can give condition again so then you can uh, give whatever the print statement or whatever the whatever you want to execute as part of that lf or lf block similarly if foot not equal to uh, like uh, something and then you can basically so if i execute this statement right so uh, it, it says my favorite veg vegetable is potato because we have assigned uh, you remember we have assigned food equal to potatoes so it goes to the second condition here uh, food equal to potatoes and uh, this this statement is executed my favorite vegetable is uh, potato and uh, we are using f string x f again here so that is the reason we are able to kind of a pass variable as a flower bracket inside flower bracket now the same if st statement uh, we can do encapsulation in python so similarly to any other program so we can encapsulate so then you can see uh, 
we have executed this function now right now let us try to execute uh, or call that function so when we try to execute or call that function it says uh, do you have a do you have any good recipe for bread so let us see why this statement is getting executed right so as we seen uh, we have uh, passed food i mean bread as a food here right so it is not uh, first it will go to the first if condition it is not for it is not true next it go to the second condition that is also not true then it will go to third condition so then it says uh, not equal to pizza right so we have passed not equal to pizza so it says uh, do you have any good recipe for pizza so that's where uh, you see that uh, state as the output uh, when you call this function here right similar to if condition maintains the conditional flow or uh, basically using this kind of uh, as a conditional statement uh, similarly uh, we can use try and accept block basically uh, to kind of uh, maintain the uh, robust error handling mechanism so that we will see before that uh, we will define a small function uh, uh, that is uh, three times that means whatever number you are passing it should be multiplied by three and then return the value so as you can see if i uh, execute this uh, function by passing two as a value so it uh, triples the value because it, it does the two times three and then uh, returns value as six so any guess uh, what will happen if we pass uh, two as a string instead of integer will it throw error or will it execute as number so let us see that So as you can see, so it has uh, given the value as 222. So basically what it is doing is it is taking as a string and passing to that function and uh, which is making a... Here uh, basically we didn't get any error. So that's a good thing about, about Python, right? I mean it's both good, or good and bad. So basically... ...output also. So in this case, uh, how do you handle these kind of situations, right? So let us see that. Here is where the assert will come into picture, right? So it will help uh, kind of uh, assert. Basically what it does it is allows to uh, run a simple test on a Python code. So if an assert statement evaluates true, nothing will, happens, uh, nothing will happen. If it is false, so then the false alarm will be raised as an error. So now, like, uh, let us see this. How, how can we uh, or, or use assert here, right? So I'm just executing assert uh, uh, type of two equal to int. That means uh, uh, run the following cell to assert that the number two is an integer. Right? So we don't get any uh, kind of error here, right? However, if I kind of uh, give number two equals to int. Right. So in this ca in this case, if you see, there is an assertion error, as you can see, right? It shows the assertion error. So that is the advantage of using assert here. So basically, it kind of a before actually using the va variable or value, uh, so that uh, it it can assert the type of it. So this is one use of assert right so it can just assert the type or it can assert the value as well also we can uh, use uh, some python inbuilt uh, basically the inbuilt function like uh, is numeric uh, so if i kind of if you kind of uh, execute this it will again throw error because it is not a numeric value here however it is not uh, throwing any error here because python string have a property to report whether or not they can be safely casted as numeric basically what it is doing is uh, even though it is a string so it is it, it can be safely casted as a numeric so that is why it is not throwing any error in this case so now let us try to bring uh, try and accept uh, as an error handling block uh, in this code piece of code right so this is a definition so let's try to execute this definition So as you see in that uh, function, uh, so we will try to execute this uh, 
when numeric is passed right the function will return string we will see that basically it says that 2 is a number so let's go back and understand what is the, the function that we have defined so if you see that function it take a, take a variable as an input here which uh, and then uh, once it is taken as an input uh, so it will try in the try block what it is exactly doing is uh, it will convert that int uh, uh, I mean that particular value which is passed as an integer and then so it will also try to kind of uh, it's a, in f string it, it pass this value and it says that uh, 2 is a number if it is failing so then it is says 2 is not a number basically what we are trying to do is in the line number 3 only in line number 3 only it fails actually if uh, if this if that particular value is not a if is not an integer right if since it is an integer value so that uh, double quotes it we are able to cast it to int right so uh, that uh, uh, it is not going to the accept block if we are passing abc in double quotes here so then it cannot be casted to int so then it will go to the accept block and execute that abc is not a number basically you can understand uh, how the try try and accept block can be used here to kind of perform a error handling so if you don't use the try or accept block the code will break and uh, you will not be able to recover the code from the point of failure here if you are using try and uh, accept block it is actually not breaking the entire code but it is giving the proper error messages so finally we will see how to apply python control flows for sql query so let us take an example where we can create some table with these values the basic principle of using designs in python and the goal of this lesson is to learn how to apply concept to execute a sql logic on databricks Data, we, we are able to kind of a query that and display this result and as you can see there is three uh, columns here id name and value with three rows and finally if you take this uh, string actually we can take string as a i mean query as a string here and then pass it to a spark.sql so uh, it can return uh, some data frame it will not uh, actually display the entire uh, so then the previous model so we can just uh, do a display of the same value spark.sql of query then you will get the result in tabular form so now let us uh, define a simple function simple query function right so this basically take a query and then execute that query and place it in the query result so after it is placed in the query result uh, so if we, if the preview is true right uh, obviously we have defaulted preview as true here so that means it will always be true so then it will actually display that result of that query and then return that uh, query result right so now let us try to kind of uh, execute this uh, or call this uh, function and let us see what happens So it is just giving the result in the table format right because uh, in, in the function that we have defined uh, it is supposed to return as a return the disk and uh, uh, then uh, it will basically display the value and then assign that to a result variable so that is why you see the table is getting displayed here uh, as part of that function and also this will be assigned to the result variable so the same query here i mean the same function simple query function right so the same query function we are able to call again but here we are giving preview equals to false that means i don't want to preview that right and uh, so when i do that so here i am uh, what exactly the query i want to execute the function selecting from this temporary view and um, i should be able to create a table but i don't want to get any output from that right so if i do that so what exactly happens let us see so since preview is false it is as you can see it has not displayed any table or any tabular format or any result for that matter right so because preview is off here now let us take another example where 
somewhere from, from my point of view as part of this uh, scripted right you are in just uh, some query as part of the getting so I inject some malicious uh, query as you can see here uh, this query looks uh, normal when you look at a first glance but it is having a very serious command here that is called as prod uh, i mean drop database production right so this kind of uh, thing is pretty much possible when you are working in the uh, in, in kind of a security uh, kind of you putting part of security threats so, uh, and and this is possible uh, uh, point and uh, one database the database of 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 the which is uh, if you put a uh, so what is the key that you have a drop back which is actually is used to check if there are multiple uh, kind of a SQL statement and if there are multiple statements uh, otherwise uh, it actually uh, is not uh, nothing is found and it return by next one so now we uh, well, uh, However, if I want to find uh, injection query dot find uh, semicolon, it says twenty five, right? So that means it is better defy 25th character or something. Basically, it doesn't return minus one. If it is returning minus one, that means there is no semicolon and it is safe. If it is giving some value apart from minus one, it is the, the SQL statement is having a multiple multiple SQL statements in that, and it is uh, maybe some kind of SQL injection thread. Let us uh, try to make a function out of it and uh, you can see this is a function which take queries and then uh, find uh, if there is any semicolon and if it's greater than or equal to zero so then uh, query contains semicolon at the index because it might be that means uh, if it is greater than or equal to zero that means uh, it will be definitely some value will be there uh, which is having a uh, semicolon and uh, that will be part of a uh, uh, sql injection and we are printing that the query contains semicolon at index so and so and uh, blocking the execution to avoid the sql injection so we can use this function to kind of dynamically block the sql injections so as you can see here uh, when i'm executing uh, calling that function injection query because it, injection query is a sql statement which is having multiple uh, colons uh, so it says uh, value error query contains semicolon and then it's when it's uh, blocking execution for the next kind of injection attack so what are the part in the hope uh, this was useful and thanks for watching